Hey guys, welcome to the second part of the V-Ray series. And in this part, we're going to be mainly dealing with the materials and setting those up properly. Now in the last part, we stopped right after we uh, set up the light and the camera. Now in the scene file which I provided, there is also a texture folder. And inside of that folder is all the textures we're going to need uh, for this particular scene. So, if you remember from the last part, I said that there were several things that had to work in combination with each other in order for V-Ray to work properly. And I gave you three things. First of all, you have to enable V-Ray, you have to use a camera, and you have to give your cameras and lights V-Ray tags. So that's three things. Now, the fourth thing is that you have to use V-Ray materials. You cannot use a native Cinema 4D material and expect it to work with V-Ray. You have to use V-Ray materials. So let's go down here to File, and we want to go V-Ray Bridge, and the majority of your time will be spent using the V-Ray Advanced Material. That is the equivalent to the standard Cinema 4D material. So we can click on that, and we'll open that up. So here we have the layout of the material, and you can see here on the left-hand side where the channels would be, we have these layers. So the first thing here by default, and I don't know why it's enabled by default, we have the material weight layer. And this is the equivalent to the alpha channel in the native Cinema 4D material. So if you have an alpha channel that you want to use, or some type of black and white image that you want to use for your material, the material weight layer here is where you would want to put it. But we're not going to be using any alpha channels for any material here, so there's really no need to have it. Next we have the bump channel. And of course this is the bump. There's not really much to explain about it. It's the bump channel, the same as Cinema 4D bump. Next we have the luminosity layer. That is the same thing as the luminance channel. We have five different specular layers, and I'll get to those in just a minute. We have two diffuse layers. The diffuse layer 1 is the same thing as the color channel in the Cinema 4D material. Next we have the refraction layer. This is the layer that you'll want to activate if you have any type of refractive value that you want to put into materials such as glass, water, or any material of that type. Now the refraction layer, if we click on it here, does not have any type of option for transparency. We have fog, we have the subsurface scattering, but we don't have anything here for transparency. And if you notice, there is no transparency channel like the native Cinema 4D material. And the reason for that is because if we go into the diffuse layer here, which would be the color channel, we have diffuse layer transparency. And if we turn that up, now you can see our material is starting to become transparent. So if you want your object to be transparent, there is no transparency channel. You have to use the diffuse layer transparency option. Okay, now also up here at the top I also missed reflection layer. And this is the one you would want to enable if you have a very glossy type of reflective material, maybe such as chrome or maybe you have glass that you want to be reflective as well. Okay, now on to the specular layer, and this is where things get a little strange and things kind of get changed up a bit here. So if we click on specular layer 1, now if you notice, every one of these look the same. And the reason for that, it just gives you the ability to have multiple specular layers if you want them. However, in most cases, I find that just using the first specular layer works just fine. So if we click on the first one here, we have the different type of modes, such as blend, Fong and Ward. We have the specular color. We can load in a texture map. This would be the specular color channel equivalent in the Cinema 4D material. We have specular layer transparency. And what this does is uh, the default value is set at 90. If we take this up all the way to 100%, we have no specular. So I'm going to turn this option on. So you can see here in this little preview there is no specular. Now as soon as I take this value down, you can see we're starting to get some specular. 
but at the same time you'll notice that we're also picking up some reflections and this is where things change up a little bit because the native Cinema 4D material in the specular channel does not trace reflection however in the V-Ray material if we go down to the bottom we have the option here to trace reflections so there's really no need in this case to activate the reflection channel so now since we have the ability to trace reflection in the specular channel we can now go up here and I'm going to take the amount of the specular layer transparency back up to the default value of 90 and now we can adjust some parameters so the first thing here is the highlight glossiness if I take this value up say to maybe 0.75 you can see now that now we have a hot spot where the specular is showing up on our little preview material. And if I take that up even higher, it gets smaller, and so on and so forth. Now if I take this down, you'll notice that the specular highlight has now become diffused. So we have it really bright, we have this really bright hot spot, and the lower I take this value, the more diffused and subtle the highlight will become. Okay, now we also have the reflection glossiness option. And if you have the trace reflection option on, like we do, then you could control how glossy this is. So by default, the value is set to 1, and you can see that we have really nice sharp reflections. And we can start to take this value down. And now you can see the reflections are becoming blurred. And you can really take it down, and now we have this really blurred metal type look. Now this is the equivalent of the blurriness option in the reflection channel in the native Cinema 4D material. Now I'm sure some of you already by now have noticed that the blurriness option in the native Cinema 4D material, and I'll just pull that up real quick. I'm going to create just a standard Cinema 4D material, go to the reflection, and here we have blurriness, and if we activate that, You can see we've got minimum and maximum samples, and of course, the lower the samples are, the worse it looks, so you really have to crank these samples up to get your uh, material to look nice, but of course, that increases render time. However, I can tell you that this glossiness option here in the V-Ray material renders much quicker, much faster than the blurriness option in the Cinema 4D material. Okay, so now since we've gone over the basics of the material parameters, we can now get started with setting up the textures for the room. So I'm just going to delete these two materials. So I'm just going to create a new V-Ray advanced material. And I'm going to call this one white wall. This is going to be the white color for the walls. Now if you don't want your walls to be white, you're more than welcome to use whatever color you like. However, for this, I want to use white. So in the diffuse layer one channel for the texture map, I'm going to load in color. And that's going to give us a pure white color. Now I can tell you right now that when you render whites in V-Ray, your whites are going to be white. There's no doubt about it. And for some reason, I can never get my whites to come out a pure white when I'm using the native Cinema 4D engine, for some reason they always come out to be a really light shade of gray and I can never really get them to be white. But I can tell you, you won't have that problem when using V-Ray. The whites do come out white. Alright, so now we want to go over to the specular layer and I'm going to activate that. Now I don't want any reflection for the wall, so I'm going to turn trace reflections off. And you'll notice that we have a bit of a hot spot up here. So I'm going to take the highlight glossiness down, maybe to a value of 0.35. And here for the texture map in the specular color, I'm going to load up some noise. And what this is going to do is just kind of give a variation in the specular on the wall, just to kind of break things up a bit. Alright, so what we can do now is jump back over here into the room, and I want to jump out of the camera. And we need to go make a set selection on our wall. So the first thing I see is that the camera needs to be turned off. And I also want to hide part of the ceiling. So this here is the part that I want to hide, because I want to be able to see this a little better. So I'm going to go into the room structure, and for the ceiling roof here, I'm just going to 
turn that off to disable it. And I'm going to click on the walls object. And in the original render that I made, I had this back wall here against the bed here on the back side. I had that a light shade of blue. Now you're welcome to choose whatever you want, but I'm just going to stick with that type of blue color. So I'm going to select that back wall and I'm going to make a set selection. And I'm going to call this blue wall. And I'm going to make a new V-Ray material. Now we could go in and just make a new one. Or what I like to do is just control click and drag the first one over to duplicate it. Open it up and I'm going to call this blue wall. And in the diffuse layer one, I'm going to go up here and click on this color palette here. I'm going to also click on the color here. That's going to open up the color picker. And I want to choose a shade of blue. So maybe something like that maybe. Click OK. There's our blue. And I'm going to drag this over here to the walls object. And then for the selection link box, we're just going to take the selection tag and drag that down. Now the way V-Ray works right now is that if we were to jump back into our camera and if we were to render this, what's going to happen is that even though we have that set selection applied to the wall, you'll notice that, and I'm probably going to need to render this again, you'll notice that the entire walls have now been turned blue and even though we have the set selection there, the whole wall is blue. And this is a current issue with V-Ray and the way it works with selection tags. Uh, this is a limitation of the Maxon SDK, as far as I know. So the only way to work around this is that you have to set your materials up in layers. And the object manager over here works from top to bottom. And then for the material over here, it works from left to right. So let's just say that we have a bunch of materials here, and I'm just going to duplicate this a couple times. This material here on the very left would be the very base material. It would be the material that is sitting on the bottom. And then if you have any material that you want to put on top of it with a set selection or with an alpha channel, those materials would then have to be placed on the right-hand side of it. If your base material is not the very left hand material, then this is not going to work properly. So what we need to do is drag our white wall material over to our wall object and we need to place it over here on the very left hand side. And now when we attempt to render this again, now the walls are white where they should be and now we have just our little selection over here which is blue. Okay, so we can jump out of that camera now. And what we could do now is start to apply some material to the floor. So these are wood planks here that I set up with the MoGraph cloner object. So if you go over to floor planks, we have four cloner objects and it just has a simple cube in here acting as the plank. So let's create a new V-Ray material. So I'm going to go to V-Ray Advanced Material. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to call this Wood Floor. So for the Diffuse Layer 1, we want to load in one of the images that I provided. So we could click here and go to Load Image or we could just click over here and click on the Load button. So here's the texture folder with all of the materials that we're going to be using for this shot and what we want is the wood texture for the floor. So I think in this case what I'm going to use is this wood 8 texture here. So I'm going to click on that, click open. That's going to load that up and we don't really need to do anything else here. So we can now go to the specular layer. So we'll turn that one on and we'll notice that we've got this really nice shiny glossy reflective wood look and I really don't want it that reflective. So for the highlight glossiness, I'm going to leave that where that's at. But I'm going to come down here to the reflection glossiness and I'm going to pull this down to maybe a value of 0.8. All right, so that looks pretty good. So we can click off of this now. And we can take this material, drag it over to the cloner object. 
and of course we need to go over here and change the projection looking kind of messy at the moment so if we click on the projection for some reason by default again this is something that I don't know why it does this but the projection is set to spherical and of course we do not want that so I'm just going to change this to a projection of cubic alright so first of all I notice that this is oriented the wrong way these wood planks are going this way but the wood floor is going this way so what we need to do is click on our material and then we need to click on the cloner object and we need to use the texture axis tool so we'll click on that and that will give us the box that we need here now unfortunately there is no grid that shows up like the default cinema 4d material would show so what we need to do is click on the rotate tool I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and that will position that and orient that in the right direction and what we need to do now is to just be sure that the scale looks correct on this wood texture so if we zoom in here I think that's going to look okay for now so we'll zoom back out and what we need to do now is just apply this material to the remaining MoGraph cloners so we can just control click and drag this first material to just duplicate it to the other cloners now I would like to have a little variation in here you'll notice that we've got these lines that are running through here so the first thing we could do is we can click on the first material go back to the texture axis tool click the first cloner object and just move it over slightly click on the second one the second material and then move this one over a little bit we'll leave the third one alone but for the fourth one we'll position this somewhere like that and that will give us a little variation in the floor so everything really doesn't look so uniform alright so we'll go back now to our camera and I'm just, we'll just render this quickly okay so that actually looks pretty good I'm happy with the way the wood floor looks uh, if you want to use your own wood material you're uh, welcome to do that there is one more thing that I would quickly like to do for this wood material and that is the bump so let's activate the bump channel for the material and I want to load the same wood texture into there so this is the wood 8 material so for the bump channel I want to go to bitmaps wood 8 that will load in the bump so I want to enable bump shadows but anytime you work with a bump map or a displacement map we need to use a grayscale image so what I want to do is desaturate this image to make it grayscale so to do so we don't need to use Photoshop we can actually do this within Cinema 4D so let's click here and go down to filter click on filter that will open up the parameters for it and now we can take the saturation and we want to pull that all the way down now we have our black and white image so now we can take the contrast up a little bit and maybe take the brightness down that's a bit too much maybe we'll just leave the brightness where it's at and I'll take the contrast to a value of maybe 40 alright so we need to go to the bump and in the bump amount I want to change this to a value of negative let's try negative 0.5 okay so I'm just going to take this camera and I'm going to position the camera up here close to the floor that way we can get a better look at the bump to see exactly if it's too much or if it's not enough alright so I think that will be enough for now because the camera is not going to be close to the floor so I think a value of negative 0.5 will be just fine if we need to come back and change it that's not really a big deal alright so we've got the textures applied for the walls and the floor and I think that's going to conclude this part but don't worry because in the next part we're going to continue on with more texturing